Well, good morning. Glav here, and welcome back to Glav's World. Here we are on another ride with the Darkside Riders Group. Five of us riding today up north. Um, I just thought I'd give you a quick spin on the bikes. Here we have a Triumph Rocket, uh, followed by my old Harley Street Glide, Atlee's Roadstar, Jeff's Harley Davison, and Sean's reasonably new Tracer. Hopefully a good ride, about 550, 560 kilometres today. So on this ride, it will go up to the central eastern part of Thailand again. All up, we'll do about 1760 odd kilometres, depending on where you're leaving from, i.e. where your home is. On our first night, we'll be in the Pechabun mountain range, which is about a 542 kilometre ride from my home. Day two, we'll do another 474 clicks thereabouts, northeast to Mukdahan. Day three, we'll see us head southwest back to Sarin, which is only a shorter ride of about 270 kilometres. And then on our final day, day four, we head south home, which is another 470 kilometres for me. halfway up the Pechabun mountain range and decided to stop for a bit of lunch at one of the local restaurants. The Tai Tu Kao Pechabun mountain range is in the north central Thailand. It's a heavily forested southern extension of the Lung Prabang range. It runs north-south forming the western rim of the Karat Plateau and rises just shy of about 6,000 feet, 5,840 feet to be precise, or 1,780 metres. <laughs> So we made it after about 560 kilometres. We're in the Pechabun mountain ranges. Tonight we're staying in a little resort called the Big Coffee Resort. Um, it was about a thousand baht thereabouts, uh, just because of the location. Just thought I'd show you, especially for my Aussie friends, what our room looks like. A thousand baht remembers 45 bucks Aussie. So this is what a room looks like. Pretty plain, but quite livable, um, reasonable shower, but I guess this is what you're really paying for right out here. If you look down there you can see the clouds actually underneath us, 
and you can see some clouds over the top. Hopefully tomorrow morning uh, when we get up we'll get a good view of the clouds beneath us down in the uh, mountain valley that you can see down there. So uh, here we are up on the deck on the Petchabun mountain range at our hotel. As you can tell, really nice view. You can see clouds rising from the lake down below and the valley below us. Really, really nice spot to visit and for a motorcyclist, a great, great road to ride up. Very, very scenic place. There's the boys having a beer. Some of the boys, the other two are off camping. Get me in it. Okay, come around. Are you doing it? Yeah. So here we are on the top of uh, Pechabun Mountain Range uh, with all the boys, including myself. Well, they haven't charged us yet, have they? Actually, better than this side. I'm not just saying that the end is quite big. So I got up at five o'clock to hopefully see this inverted cloud layer, but no such luck. We we're just covered in cloud from about five till seven. So here's a picture of what it should look like. So here we are at the start of day two, leaving the big coffee resort at the top of the Petchabun mountain range here. Just pan round and show you the boys getting ready. Hoping for a safe and quick ride today. Well, here we are coming belting down the Pechabun mountain range. This is just a fantastic, great piece of motorcycle road. It's tight, it's twisty, but it's also damp and a bit mossy in places as well. My mate Jeff on his Harley Fat Boy had a serious oh crap experience halfway down the mountain where he lost his back brakes. This has happened to me on a few occasions over the last few years and it seems to me that the quality of brake fluid today is just rubbish. Any serious rider needs to change his fluid every two years, otherwise it just overheats when it's under pressure and always gives out when you need it most. Be warned. So once we're down the mountain we head towards Mukdahan, initially on Highway 21 and then on Highway 201. I've got to tell you people that if you're riding a cruiser or a tourer, you will just be in absolutely motorcycle heaven. I don't know for exactly how far we went on this type of road, but I reckon we travelled through at least 100 kilometres of mountain roads in perfect condition with wide sweeping corners ideal for our types of bikes. We just pushed our bikes to the limits. The area is just so green and pictu picturesque. Ye fri friggin' ha, this was just motorcycle nirvana. If you couldn't have a good time here, you don't deserve to ride. Well, the riding of the mountains that we had just done might have got the better of me. My fault, I was out in front and as we came across the flats, uh, this is after the windy bits, um, there was a police roadblock, of which I've got to tell you we would have gone through 20 or 30 police roadblocks on this trip, they were everywhere. And they happened to have a laser gun on this one, <clears throat> which was interesting. They pulled all five bikes up that you can see here, and I was the first to get booked. Uh, my mate Jeff was the second to get booked. Interestingly enough, when the other blokes lined up, they hand their licences over, the coppers uh, rejected them and said, no, just the first two's are enough. What's even further interesting, the, the chief honcho, I don't know if he was the captain or whatever, came over and said, you lucky boys, you now have, uh, cannot book for seven days. In other words, we could go like about out of hell for seven days and because we'd already been booked for speeding, couldn't get booked again. i got to tell you, the Thai police up north are so polite, um, speak good English as well, surprisingly, um, and respectful and were a pleasure to deal with. So uh, here we are in Mukdahan and we're heading to Sarin um, today. It's not a big ride today, about 
just shy of 300 kilometers four or five hours um, this is a view from our hotel room this is Muktahan um, and that is the Mekong River that I'm spanning down the Mekong River is the border in many places between Laos and um, also Cambodia and Thailand that's Lao that we're looking at now across the river. I think the town's called Savannaket. Um, and the river, as I said, is the Thai border. Quite interesting. Many people travel across from Thailand for the Wats and also apparently the casinos that are over there in Lao. Just thought I'd give you a peek of my room in Muktahan. It's about a thousand baht, 45 bucks, um, quite reasonable, typical mid-range Thai style room, around that thousand baht mark, you know in Australia or the US you might classify this as three, three and a half stars, but you know reasonable. Muktahan Tower at night, great photo. Well, here we are on day three. We're traveling from Muktahan to Sarin today, which I've never been to before. It's a pretty easy ride today, about 270 kilometers. As you'll see from the video here, nice roads, pretty green, not a bad ride at all. Not too many towns that you have to navigate your way through. This is how you laid it, Ute, Thai style. Talk about maximization. This is a PTT gas station which has all your fuel, then a 7-Eleven, then another cafe, then a toilet block, then an Amazon cafe, and then down the end here you have a food centre which you can choose different types of food. So really it's a great concept where you can get a stop, have your lunch, have a break and get everything you need. Crispy pork, rice, egg, cucumber, sausage and soup all for 40 baht, less than 2 bucks. So we've just checked into our hotel in Sarin, 1100 baht, 50 odd Aussie dollars I guess. Giving you a quick look around, as you'd call this, a two and a half or a three star hotel. Uh, not much to look at but quite comfortable unfortunately. We were looking forward, it is bloody hot and going for a swim, but the uh, swimming pool's empty. They failed to tell us about that, but never mind. yippee ki -yay. All we need is a good bed for a rest before we ride again tomorrow. So it's our last day today, which is of course day four. A tip for other riders is when you're going to come back from Sarin, use Highway 24, then the 304 and then come down the 331. Highway 24 and 304 avoid a lot of the small townships that you have to go through and you miss most of those by using this route. About 480 kilometres today and about six hours in the saddle plus stops. So about two hours away from home, um, Atlee's bike, his handlebars, have a major crack all the way through. I've never seen this on a motorcycle before but how dangerous can that be? And poor old Outley spent the rest of the trip in a truck with his bike bringing it home. Well, that brings us to the end of another Glaveswell video. Really hope you enjoyed it and it may have shown you some things that you haven't seen before. Remember people, life is very short, so live life today.